Hi friends! Welcome sa part 5 ng ating Principles Test Review. Sa video na to, i-review natin ang Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads at mga ibang DepEd orders and issuances na kaugnay nito. Isa pa, magre-review din tayo ng mga pointers na dapat ninyong pag-aralan at balikan na kaugnay sa Principles Test na darating. Kaya, kung hindi pa kayo nakasubscribe sa Aris Barago Vlogs, mag-subscribe na, mag-like, mag-comment, at mag-share. Start na tayo! Visiting the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads. May mga pointers na ako nilagay para at least yung mga ibang parts ng uh, PPSSH ay uh, mabalikan ninyo at matingnan kung ano yung mga dapat pa ninyong pag-aralan. So yun, let's start. Uh, I know you're familiar with uh, the movie Squid Game. Uh, I think it's not a movie, it's a series by Netflix. So, nandiyan na kayo, kaya you should uh, press the green button. So, sabi nga, uh, don't rush, take your time. Di ba? Na, gayahin nyo yung style ni Sir Tony na at least merong tatlong issuances na binabasa paggabi. And, uh, take time to read. But don't rush kasi pag halimbawa malapit na yung exam tapos saka kayo magre-review mahirap kukulangin talaga kayo sa oras sabi nga time waits for no one and uh, the best thing to do is to strategize so kung mag exam kayo you have, you have to strategize think of ways on how you can easily memorize things by heart yun, isa, build a team. So, in uh, your review, you can uh, have uh, a team to to study together, exchange ideas, so that uh, when you take the exam, ready na kayo dahil yung mga ideas na napag-usapan nyo at uh, na-ready nyo na yung uh, sarili nyo kasi meron kayong team so yun aim so you will be aiming to to, to pass the principles test come 2022 kasi sabi sa March 2022 daw ang exam and be courageous di ba minsan kasi ganyan ay saka na ako magi exam kasi hindi pa ako ready eh kailan ka pa magiging ready di ba laging uh, may mga excuses And of course, reach the goal and do your best. So good luck sa inyo. And I will start by discussing the comparison between the NC BSSH and, of course, the the current PPSSH. Yung ating ano NC BSSH has seven domains: school leadership, instructional leadership, creating a student-centered learning climate, and so on. So, nung kami ang nag-exam, I, I would just like to, to share this to you. Nung 2015, principles test, ang uh, mga items ay 200 items, pero divided siya into 3, 4, 5, 6, into 7. 7 uh, parts. Which includes school leadership, instructional leadership, creating a student-centered climate, Human Resource Management and Professional Development, Parents Involvement, School Management and Operations, at saka yung Personal and Professional Attributes and Interpersonal Effectiveness. Ayan. So, when I took the test, ito yung mga scores na nakuha ko. So, ngayon, ang alam ko ay uh, PPSSH na magiging basis. So let's proceed to the main topic which was given to me 
It's all about the national adoption and implementation of the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads. Sabi, ito ay DepEd Order Number no. 24, Series of 2020. Para hindi nyo siya makalimutan, tingnan nyo to. Ano yan? Isang case na beer. Para masaya. Diba? So, 24 yan. So, tandaan nyo, 24. So, DepEd Order Number no. 24. 2020 Series of 2020 Yan. Isa pa, uh, mahilig sa 20 at neb si Mayor ng Manila, si Esco Moreno Pwede nang i-relate nyo si Esco Moreno Dito sa DepEd Order number 24 Series of 2020 So that's one technique, uh, visualization on how you can memorize things So syempre, dito sa ating uh, uh, Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads Ang number one diyan na sinasabi is the role of school heads in improving the quality of basic education in the Philippines So, come the examination So, the aim of PPSS, PPSSH is to improve the quality of basic education in the Philippines and upholds the quality that quality student learning is contingent upon quality teachers who are supported by quality school leaders. So we can say that uh, the school leader or the principals are the focal persons in uh, what we say quality education. So it also recognizes the importance of professional standards in the continuing professional development and advancement of school heads. So another overview, the PPSSH serves as a public statement of professional accountability of school heads. Kaya pag kayo naging principal na or you are acting as principal now, nasa sa inyo yung aura, di ba? yung accountability it sets out the school heads are expected to know be able to do and value as they progress in their profession so we are always expected to improve kaya nga sabi dun sa panunumpa ng kawani ng gobyerno ay papaunla rin ko ang aking sarili upang makapaglingkod ng lubos at mahusay. Another overview is it provides for a common language for high impact leadership expected of school heads, which is to guide individual professional reflections as well as professional discussions among educational leaders and other stakeholders, and to inform the pro provision of professional learning and development for school heads. So, highlighted dyan yung individual professional reflections that we should continually, continuously reflect and think of our actions towards improving quality education. And next is professional learning and development. That is why gone were the days na pag pumasok ka sa DepEd is uh, your teacher one. So, you should continuously improve. You know, uh, I would like to share this to you. I've been a teacher 1, teacher 2, teacher 3, uh, master teacher 1, master teacher 2, principal 1, principal 2. So I, I have uh, almost 8 appointment, eight appointments for serving DepEd. Talagang dumaan ako dun sa mga stages. And what I'm doing is I always reflect and I make sure that I am learning professionally and I am continuously developing. Minsan kasi, di ba, pa, para ma-improve natin yung sarili natin, minsan may mga challenges. Pero, let us always think na kaya natin yan, malalampasan natin. So, there is a need to complement the standards for teachers and that is stipulated in DepEd Order Number no. 42, Series of 2017, which is the National Adoption and Implementation of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. And 
So, kailangan ma-complement ng PPSSH yung Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. So, as a background, school leadership plays a key role in improving school outcomes by influencing the motivations and capacities of teachers as well as the school climate and environment. So, according to OECD 2008, page 2. So, as school leader, you should uh, always think of how to improve the outcome, how to motivate and how to capacitate our co-teachers in the teaching learning process in their professional development as well as developing their character and competence. Kaya nga ngayon, uh, ang mga teachers during this time, kahit uh, medyo may uh, sabihin natin na hindi, hindi sila masyadong teki, they should uh, be taught and uh, given technical assistance on how to use these technologies. So school heads as stewards of schools play a crucial role in ensuring an enabling and supportive environment for effective teaching and learning. So as uh, stewards of school, we should make sure and provide support for our co-teachers in terms of knowledge and of course uh, technical assistance in terms of providing the necessary knowledge in the use of technology, ICT as well as content. Dito sa school namin, merong umalis na master teacher too sa senior high school, lumipat. So nawala ng teacher sa sa science, sa senior high school, na physical science, sa environmental and life science. And I said to the coordinator, well, I am a um, science teacher. So what I did as was co-teach with the science teacher. And once in a while, I, I gave lectures to the senior high school students. That is one way on how you provide support for your co-teacher in terms of instruction, in terms of content. Kasi ang magtuturo naman, mat major, pero hindi, hindi niya kabisado yung content ng uh, sciences. So pagdating doon, I make sure that I support the teachers in terms of instruction, in terms of content. Likewise, yung mga training, Papatraining kami ng paggagawa ng Google Forms, Google Sheets, those those basic uh, ICT skills that should be provided and should be given to teachers. So changes brought about by various national and global frameworks such as the K-12 Basic Education Program, the ASEAN Integration, Globalization, and the changing character of the 21st century learners necessitate a call for the rethinking of DO number 32 series of 2010 titled the National Adoption and Implementation of the National Competency-Based Standards for School Heads. So the PPSSH introduces a continuum that supports school heads to improve their professional practice and pursue career progression. So what are the objectives of the PPSSH? The PPSSH aims to set out clear expectations of school heads along well-defined career stages of professional development from beginning to exemplary practice. Engage school heads to actively embrace a continuing effort to attain high levels of proficiency and provide support for professional learning and development help identify development needs and facilitate uniform assessment of performance. So if you will remember, so look along these lines. Expectations ng mga school heads in terms of professional development. 
So number one is for professional development. Next is high levels of proficiency, how you perform, how you deliver the outcome. And last is for professional learning and development. For the policy statement, it is a set of standards for school heads that articulates the professional practice expected of a quality school head. It shall be the foundation of relevant human resource systems, policies, guidelines, and mechanisms including the recruitment, selection, and placement, performance appraisal, rewards, and recognition, and talent management of school heads and the basis for all their professional development programs. But as of this um, this year, yung latest na OPCRF ng mga school heads, eh, hindi pa inapply ang PPSSH. And I don't know kung kailan i-implement paggamit ng PPSSH in terms of the performance appraisal. Dito sa Depp and Quezon in particular, and of course, it is easy to give rewards and recognition to school heads if it is rated numerically. So, makikita, ito yung performance rating. That is why uh, yung IPCRF for teachers is also very important. Pag mag maghahanap ka ng awardee sa isang school, so madali nang tingnan sino yung pinakamataas ang IPCRF rating. So, pwede na natin sabihin na he or she can be called an outstanding teacher if the basis is, of course, the validated IPCRF. It also aims to support school heads in the performance of their mandates and roles in the regions, school, schools division, and our schools, including the improvement of teacher quality and eventually learner achievement. It promotes the continuing professional development and advancement of school heads based on the principles of career, long learning, and helps school heads reflect on and assess their own practice as they aspire for and pursue professional development. When I was a teacher, I was thinking, paano kaya maging Master Teacher 1 or Master Teacher 2? Because... I would like to improve and uh, help learners. Kasi sabi ko, pag mga master teacher, parang sila yung mga inuutusan ng principal. Parang lagi sila yung kasama. So sabi ko, parang I would like also to learn and to, to improve. That is why I, I aim to become a master teacher. And during that time, there were people who helped me. May mga nagturo sa akin, may mga nag-mentor sa akin. Tingnan pa paano makarating doon. Okay? And the uh, aspiring principals of Tayabas Quezon are lucky to have to have this activity to support you in terms of your professional development. So this is uh, basically the the framework of the PPSSH. It shows a broad conceptual sphere of leadership practices in five domains. So these are the domains, leading strategically, managing school operations and resources, focusing on teaching and learning, developing self and others, and building connection. And it depicts the synergy between maximizing school effectiveness and ensuring people effectiveness through a broad sphere of instructional and administrative practices and it shows learners at the center of the framework to emphasize the important role of school heads for the improvement of learner achievement which is a holistically developed Filipino learners the PPSSH is has the following principles. It is learner-centered. It emphasizes building and strengthening a network of stakeholders for school and people effectiveness. Take note of the word building and strengthening network. That is not only uh, building network but strengthening
strengthening so when you're making a building and you would like to strengthen your building it should have a very strong foundation and that foundation lies with the stakeholders because they will help and support the schools in terms of your programs projects and activities it reflects the understanding of problems and issues at the school and the need to address them so a healthy school environment has always these problems challenges and issues that we need to address it focuses on developing high quality instructions developing a strong culture a strong school culture and ensuring job embedded professional development for school personnel so when we say uh, development for school personnel ito mga support systems ating instruction yan ang teaching personnel all of them should be given also professional development it reflects values and concepts in promoting school success it regards supervision as a crucial organizational behavior in school management it highlights the importance of accountability and transparency of school heads and it is anchored on the principles of inclusivity so we are focusing on in inclusive education sabi walang batang naiiwan lahat ng bata kinakalinga that is the principles of inclusive inclusivity and the PPSSH has these career stages. There's four career stages. So one, two, three, and four. Which, for career stage one, school heads or the aspiring school heads have acquired the prerequisite qualifications for the school head position. They demonstrate basic knowledge and understanding of the authority, responsibility, and accountability expected of school heads. So, meron ka yung basic knowledge. You can demonstrate. You understand. So, kung nandyan ka, you're, you belong to career stage 1. For career stage 2, um, sabi, they are professionally independent in performing their functions as instructional leaders and administrative managers. So, yung una, uh, demonstrate basic knowledge. So, may mga hindi pa alam. So, magtatanong pa, uh, we need technical assistance. I need technical assistance for this and that. For career stage 2, if you are a school head, you are independent and you can perform your function well. And for career stage 3, school heads exhibit advanced skills in performing their functions. So, pag sinabing uh, ng school head na we will be having this activity, so yung mga tao, well delegated ang mga trabaho, and uh, may bonus pa, gumawa pa ng uh, evaluation. And then, uh, in-archive pa yung mga output, so advanced skills in performing their functions. So, beyond the uh, the what is expected and for career stage 4 ito na yung model the highest standards of practice in performing their functions as instructional leaders and administrative managers if you are in career stage 4 bin a benchmark ka na ikaw na yung pinupuntahan ikaw na yung pinagtatanungan and you belong to the top leaders na malimit ay kinukuha mga resource speaker mga kinukuha as uh, lecturer and uh, you have written manuals documents pertaining to your work as school heads so you model the highest standards so ikaw na yung mga awardee in the division national and regional level so that is career stage 4 so try to reflect, think, where are you now? Where I am now? Am I a school head?
who demonstrate basic knowledge and understanding or I have the advanced skills in performing my task or I am a model of the highest standards of practice in being a school heads in terms of my authority, responsibility, and accountability. So for this PPSH, we have five domains and then 34 strands and 34 indicators per career stage. So let's talk about the domains. So it has five domains. Number one is leading strategically. Number two, managing school operations and resources. Number three, focusing on teaching and learning. And four, developing self and others. And five, building connections. So let's compare the NCBSSH and the PPSSH. Yung domain one, school leadership, sa PPSSH is the same. Ginawa lang siyang leading strategically. Why? Kasi yung sa NCBSSH is school leadership. It's the basic how you lead the school, school leadership. But for PPSSH, it added the word, the word strategically. So, one example is when you lead strategically. Di ba malimit pag uh, nagsusulisi tayo, it is a shotgun approach or when we build partnership. Oh, sige, lahat ng mga kakilala ko, hihingan ko uh, this and that because kailangan natin uh, magpa-print ng module. Kailangan, we will ask them for typewriting papers. But when you lead strategically, you look for the resources of whom you will ask for help. So, for example, you will be asking for help sa isang may-ari ng furniture shop. Sa kanila, hihingin mo yung mga scrap na kahoy and then you can make table for those students who has difficulty for their learning space. O yun, walang problema siguro pag may may uh, uh, merong general merchandise. So, maybe we can ask for typewriting or ink or a copier or a printer diba? so kung meron siyang restaurant at uh, magbibuild ka ng partnership maybe you can ask the owner or the proprietor for support in terms of the feeding program yung mga ganong strat strategies is what we say you are leading strategically and that you have uh, good plans for the school Next, for NCBSSH, NCBHSS, NC, NCBSSH has Domain 2 and Domain 3, which includes instructional leadership and creating a student-centered learning climate, which falls under Domain 3 of the PPSSH. So, pinagsama yung NCBSSH 2 and 3, ginawa na lang siyang isang domain sa PPSSH which is focusing on teaching and learning next domain 4 human resource management and professional development so sa domain 4 naman siya inilagay ng PPSSH which is for developing self and others so nilagyan lang ng self and others and for number 5 parent involvement and community partnership Pinasimple naman, parang ginawa lang siyang gist, which is building connections. And for domain 6, school management and daily operations, dito sa NCBSSH, inilagay siya sa domain 2, managing school operations and resources. Tapos, yung domain 7, personal and professional attributes and interpersonal effectiveness, ay together with 4, Domain 4 of NCBSSH, nilagay siya sa number Domain 4, which is Developing Self and Others. So, that is basically, halos yun din. Uh, ginawa na lang siyang, ni-streamline lang yung NCBSSH to PPSSH. At the same time, uh, mas focus yung PPSSH into using simple terms and how the standards will be made. <laughs> 
So let's proceed to the scope of the PPSSH and uh, let's review some guidelines and issuances per domain for the principles test because we are preparing for the test itself and uh, come to review and read the scope of PPSSH because this will be the coverage of the examination. For domain 1, which is leading strategically, it will cover DepEd's mission, vision, mission, and core values. And then, of course, the Republic Act 9155, the conduct of research and innovations, Kasama din dyan yung leading strategically, ESIP, LIS, EBEIS, SRC, SBM, and CIP. Now, uh, kung meron pa kayong naisip na pwedeng isama sa leading strategically, then uh, you can add and uh, you can uh, consider that as part of the coverage for domain 1, which is leading strategically. So, focusing on domain 1, leading strategically, babalikan nyo tong DEPED Order number 36, Series of 2013, which is the Department of Education's vision, mission, and core values. So, take note, DEPED Order number 36, Series of 2013. So, let's review. The vision is we dream of Filipinos who passionately love their country and whose values and competencies enable them to realize their full potential and contribute meaningfully to building the nation. As a learner-centered public institution, the Department of Education continuously improves itself to better serve its stakeholders. I would like to share this to you kasi merong isang examination way back 20, I think 2011, na merong uh, principles test na ang ginawa yung vision, uh, DepEd vision and mission naka fill in the blank so ilang items yun pag hindi mo siya memorize mahirap ting manghula although it's multiple choice so yun namang previous examination ang sabi uh, may mga graph may mga yung mga table and that you have to analyze. So, iba-iba talaga yung type of exam at saka yung mga strategy nila sa paggawa ng exam. Imagine nyo, fill in the blank na DepEd vision and mission. So, talagang uh, masasabi natin na dapat lahat ng mga pwedeng itanong, pwede nating pag-aralan, e gawin na natin habang may oras pa. And the legal basis for this is Section 17 under Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution which mandates the state to give priority to education, science and technology, arts, culture and sports to foster patriotism and nationalism, accelerate social progress, human liberation and development. So, basta hindi siya basta ginawa, oh, ito yung mission natin. Sino magaling na, na writer? You do this. But it is anchored on the Philippine Constitution, specifically Section 17, Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution. Madali, madali lang siyang tandaan. Ako kasi, para makapag-memorize ako, gumagawa ako ng mga mnemonic. So, laging may 7. So, Section 17 and 1987 Constitution and Article 2. Mga numbers na pwede mo, ah, may 7 yun. So, parang 17, 1987. You, you try to imagine and uh, relate those numbers to something so that you can easily memorize. Next, mission. To protect and promote the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based culture and complete basic education where students learn in a child-friendly, sensitive, gender-sensitive, safe and motivating environment and so on. And this is mandated and this is anchored on the 1987 Philippine Constitution which says that our mission states our duty as stewards of education to protect and promote the right of all citizens. So, yan yung kanyang legal basis. Yan yung kanyang foundation. 
And then, meron siyang core values, makadiyos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa, which is under Republic Act 8491, RA 8491, which states that our national motto shall be makadiyos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. So, dyan galing yan, Republic Act 8491. Okay? So, madaling tandaan, 84, yan yung grade bago, bago maging honor. So, 91 naman, uh, that, that I think is uh, high honor. So, 84, 91. So, nyo, parang i-relate nyo siya sa grades. So, ayaw mo magka-84 pero gusto mo magka-91. So, Republic Act 84-91. Mga ganun na strategy. Next, uh, for leading strategically, we have Republic Act 91-55 which is, of course, laging sinasabi ng mga school head that uh, this is school-based management and this is stipulated in Republic Act 91-55 which is an act instituting a framework of governance for basic education, establishing authority and accountability, and renaming the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports as the Department of Education for other purpose, which is also known as the Governance, governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. So, for Chapter 1 and Section 7 of RA 9155 in the school level, take note that there shall be a school head for all public elementary schools and public high schools or a cluster thereof. The establishment of integrated schools from existing public elementary and public high schools shall be encouraged. The school head who may be assisted by an assistant school head shall be both an instructional leader and administrative manager. The school head shall from form a team with the school teachers, learning facilitators for delivery of quality educational programs, projects, and services. A core of non-teaching staff shall handle the school's administrative, fiscal, and auxiliary services, consistent with the national educational policies, plans, and standards, and the school head shall have authority, accountability, and responsibility for the following. Yan. Ito ang uh, sinasabi sa Republic Act 9155 and number one is setting the mission, vision, goals, and objectives of the school which is going back to DepEd's mission, vision, and core values. Hindi na uso yung merong sariling uh, uh, school mission and vision na mga nakalagay sa mga entrance na mga school sa kanilang mga markers. So, we are following one, depth ed, mission, vision, and core values. That is number one. Number two, creating an environment within the school that is conducive to teaching and learning. As of now, in this time of pandemic, although ang mga estudyante natin, ang mga mag-aaral natin ay wala sa school, pero we should also check on them. Make sure that they have at least a learning space which is conducive to learning. And number three, implementing the school curriculum and being accountable for higher learning outcomes. So, I think that's very self-explanatory. And for number four, developing the school education program and school improvement plan. Offering educational programs, projects, and services which provide equitable opportunities for all learners in the community. So, when I was the principal one of Liwayway National High School, I have this program, Math Cycle, which is Math and Science on Tricycle. Napansin ko kasi yung mga teachers, meron silang tricycle na service. By the way, this is uh, bago mag-pandemic. So sabi ko, parang marami tayong mga bata sa community na hmm, medyo mababa ang grades sa mathematics and science. And of course, we all know the PISA result. Yung examination kung saan 
lowest ang Pilipinas. So, that is one rationale. And this program is, of course, uh, to support the students na nahihirapan sa math and science. So, ang ginawa namin, nag- uh, kuha kami ng uh, mga volunteer, teachers din, and then uh, napunta kami sa mga community. We do tutorials in mathematics and science. Ngayon nga, uh, ginawa ko na siyang Math Cycle Plus, sinamahan ng reading. Tapos, may mga teachers na volunteer namin na pag birthday nila or pag uh, halimbawa ay anniversary nilang mag-asawa, sila yung nagpe-pledge for the feeding component para sa mga students. So, sila yung nagdo-donate ng pagkain for for that particular sessions kasi pumupunta kami sa community. Okay? So, ang ang ginawa namin to strategize eh kinausap namin yung mga leader ng community, halimbawa yung isang community doon sa Liwayway, yung Gawad Kalinga community. So, meron kaming mga estudyante doon na pinupuntahan namin. And later, uh, in-extend na namin yung program pati sa mga bata, sa mga elementary students. And that is also doing it strategically. Kasi sabi namin, yung mga elementary students naman na yun, magiging dinaming estudyante. Ayun. Tapos nag-pandemic, nung nag-pandemic naman, uh, ginawa ko naman siyang uh, math cycle online. Online naman. Ang ginawa ko naman, ito naman eh, doon sa mga bata, of course, na may internet connection. Sabi nga, pag gumawa ka ng intervention, so kung meron kang doon sa mga underprivileged na students and learners, so doon naman tayo sa medyo kaya-kaya na mag-load, na kayang uh, makakonect sa internet. Okay? Pag naman kasi may 20 pesos ka, pwede ka na namang uh, yan, mag, uh, mag-zoom or pwede kang uh, uh, Google Meet okay? or FB Live. So, ang ginawa ko naman, kumuha ako ng mga friend ko na mga teachers sa math and science na magbo-volunteer to teach for that particular session. Ang ginawa ko naman, ini-anchor ko yung milk dun sa i-discuss nila which will serve as a tutorial and reinforcement for the teaching and learning process of the students. So, yun ang how you do educational programs, projects, and services which provides equitable opportunities for all learners in the community. Okay, that is one example. Next is introducing new and innovative modes of instruction to achieve higher learning outcomes. So, yung mga ginagawa ng mga teachers, nagba-vlog, nagpo-post ng mga lessons sa, sa YouTube, these are innovative and new ways on how to provide additional instruction, reinforcement for learning. Okay, alam nyo kasi nasa YouTube na lahat. Uh, mula pagre-repair ng makina hanggang pagpipintura. Okay, lahat. Tinuturo na doon. Basta piliin nyo lang yung content kung okay. Next, administering and managing all personnel, physical and fiscal resources of the school. You know, this one is uh, really... Uh, one of the siguro sabihin ko pinakahalos isa sa pinakataxing is doing the, the fiscal management of the school and of course recommending the staffing complement of the school based on its needs so titingnan mo pag may nabakanting items sinong ipapalit tapos may magmove sino naman yung mapopromote Yan. And kung sino naman yung kukunin mong bago dun sa mga nabakanting item That is stopping complement of the school based on its needs Next is encouraging staff development So that, that is why if uh, you are a school head You will always remind your co-teachers to continuously educate themselves To attend trainings, even online trainings and to read and develop a habit for doing research that is encouraging staff development. And you can do ways on how you can motivate them. Next, establishing school and community networks and encouraging the active participation of teachers, 
organizations, non-academic personnel of public schools and parents, teachers, and community associations. And last, eh, ah, last na ba to? Is accepting donations, gifts, and others. Yan, donations must be reported to district supervisors and division superintendents. Hindi pa pala. Next is performing such other functions as may be assigned by proper authorities. So, in Deped Quezon, I have uh, various functions which was assigned to me. I am a member of the fact-finding investigation team of Deped Quezon where we conduct uh, FFI for various cases. And I am also a member of, uh, we have now uh, Project PUSH, the professional upliftment for school heads where we conduct uh, online sessions also and uh, soon face-to-face uh, -face session pag nagluwag-luwag na and that is uh, as a review facilitator for this coming uh, principal's test and all other functions as a uh, uh, reviewer validator of uh, modules and sa tech book naman dito uh, because um, the school where I belong is a tech box schools. Uh, we are preparing our learning activity sheets or last. And it was re this last were also reviewed by the division office. Ito ha, the Secretary of Education shall create a promotions board at the appropriate levels which shall formulate and implement a system of promotion for schools, division supervisors, schools, district supervisors, and school heads. Promotion of school heads shall be based on educational qualification, merit, and performance rather than on the number of teachers, learning facilitators, and learners in the school. So, sinasabi na dapat qualification, merit, and performance. And uh, ang uh, mga school heads, syempre pag uh, magpapapromote, you have to prepare yourself because preparation is the best uh, way for promotion. So, to prepare mo yung sarili mo, you have to to do research, Yan. but not uh, necessarily community service. Kasi yung community service, it is included uh, sa promotion ng uh, master teacher. But then, uh, yung mga pwedeng community service, it can, you can also do other innovations naman. Innovations, and then if you are a writer, you wrote a book, then the, those things are part of being uh, promoted to the next higher position. And then, of course, education. Diba sabi ko, uh, part din sa leading strategically yung research and innovation. For research and innovation, we will consider DEPED Order Number 39, Series of 2016, which is the adoption of the Basic Education Research Agenda. Okay, so this is the conceptual framework of the Basic Education Research Agenda, where... The target outcomes is for every Filipino has access to complete basic education. Complete basic education is quality education for effective, transparent, and engaging governance of basic education. Where research agenda includes teaching and learning, child protection, human resource development, governance, disaster risk reduction management, inclusive education, and gender and development. So, if you are planning to do an action research or do actual research, you can look dito sa mga research agenda na to at iyan ang pwede mong gawa ng research. But beyond that, it's not included on the framework. Next, uh, DEPED Order Number 44, Series of 2015, which is the Guidelines on the Enhanced School Improvement Planning Process and the School Report Card. Okay, so ito naman ay School Improvement Planning. Diba? 
Uh, madali yan tandaan kasi 44. So, yung, yung 44, you can uh, relate this sa sa plug. ba diba? Parang parang flag yung 44. Na uh, flag can symbolize sa uh, planning. It can also be a symbol for reporting. ba diba? Pag may flag, you have to report. And then, this is related to the school report card. This is also related to the SIP. So, tandaan nyo. Ano nga ba yung tepid order na sa planning at saka sa SRC? Sabi ni Doc Aris, uh, it's related to to the SIP and SRC. Yung SRC, that that is the school report card. Di ba? Pag nagre-report, kailangan, ah, DepEd Order number 44 kasi parang plug yung 44. It's series of 2015. So, for the SIP, SRC, and CIP, it has the legal basis again, which emanates from the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001, which is, again, Republic Act 9155. And we have also the CI, the CI process, the continuous improvement process, which is a methodology to continuously assess, analyze, and act on the performance, improvement of key processes and service delivery, focusing on both stakeholders' needs and desired performance. Ah, kanina na banggit ni Mam Lot, sabi niya, ah, siguro hindi first course ni Sir Ari sa education. Yes, my first course was sa mechanical engineering. And I was once in the industry sector. I am a graduate of the Sisters of Mary School. If you are familiar with that, the Sisters of Mary School is in Silang Cavite. It caters to poor but deserving students. And then the curriculum is textbook. And when I studied there, I took up automotive technology. And after that, I was hired by uh, Mitsubishi Motors as a production operator. At pinagsabay ko yung pag-aaral at saka yung uh, uh, pagtatrabaho sa Mitsubishi Motors and I took up mechanical engineering. And uh, noong 1995, tinuturo na sa amin yung CI, yung CIP. Actually, the Japanese term for CIP is Kaizen which means continuous improvement. Kaya nga yung isa kong anak, yung panganay kong anak, pinangalanan ko ng Kaizen kasi continuous improvement. And it tells a story na kasi kami ay bagong mag-asawa, may bagong may anak na panganay na nag-uumpisa pa lang. So our life should be a continuous process, a continuous improvement process. Kaya pinangalanan namin siya ng Kaizen, which means continuous improvement. Yan. So, this is uh, not new, especially in the industry sector. Tapos, uh, na-adapt, tapos dinala sa DepEd at naging uh, CIP. And, uh, siguro ang magandang gawin ng, ng mga schools, ng mga magiging mga school heads, is to have this quality circle. Merong mga tao na talagang nagmi-meet, nagmi-meeting at gumagawa ng mga innovation at gumagawa ng mga CI process para ma-improve yung mga processes within the school and it should be continuous. Okay. So, CI projects are projects that revolve around the continuous improvement of identified school process which I am saying service delivery related to access quality governance with the end view of improving learning outcomes. That is why uh, maganda yung every after, every uh, activity. Evaluate natin, tingnan natin, pag-usapan natin, mga kasama, what do we need to improve? Or if you are a school head, by just going around and looking around, makikita mo, I think this process needs improvement. So gather ka ng team mo, and then you can apply the CI process. Again, DepEd Order number 44, Series of 2015. Don't forget those plugs. The School Report Card, the SRC, is a report that provides stakeholders a snapshot of the school's current condition and performance. It is a tool for advocating and communicating the school situation, context, and performance to internal and external stakeholders to involve them in making the school a better place for 
learning. So, ito malimit na report ng school heads kasi merong SOSA State of the School Address. So, I think uh, this, uh, those uh, things that I have mentioned belong to Domain 1. So, pag-aralan yung mabuti sa Domain 1, yung DepEd Vision, Mission, the, the legal basis, you also do a study on how you do action research based on the basic education research agenda and then uh, study on the processes of the school improvement plan and the CIP. For do domain 2, managing school operations, this is uh, this includes MOE Utilization, Republic Act 9184, which is the Government Procurement Act, Education Performance Indicators, 2010 Education Facilities Manual, GAD Implementation, Canteen Operations, DEPED Order Number 30 Series of 2019, which is the, the DEMOS, which is the Department of Education Manual of Style, Department Deped Order Number 18, Series of 2019, which is the Supplemental Guidelines on the Implementation of the School-Based Feeding Program for Fiscal Year 2019. So, ito yung sa Domain 2. Meron pa. Marami kasi siya. Kasi school operations. Deped Order Number 29, Series of 2019, which is the Procedural Guidelines on the Management of Cash, cash Advances for MOOI Non-Implementing Units. Deped Order Number 49, Series of 2006, which is the Guidelines for Administrative Cases. O oh, yan. Uh, Deped Order Number 48, Series of 2018, which is about electioneering. And I, again, this is very timely kasi uh, malapit na election. So you can also do, make a review on this. The PPST, the RPMS, IPCRF, Oplan Balik Skwela, Early Registration, DRRM, Ayun, nabanggit ko na pala, Republic Act 9184 and AWA. Based on civil service policies and how it is adapted by DepEd. So, kung hindi pa kayo subscribe sa Aris Barago Vlogs, yan, uh, you have the link here, ito, for this video, Principles Test Review 2022 and Quest Part 4, which is focusing on managing school operations and resources uh, this is also a this is a recorded video on domain 2. Uh, ito naman, yun ang ko kanina, education performance indicators. Yan, ito rin. Pwede nyo rin siyang balikan. Para hindi ko na siya i-discuss, nilagay ko na siya sa vlog. Nakakatuwa nga ngayon yung mga kasama naming school heads dito sa Gumaka East District. Ang sabi nila, uh, Sir Aris, gawa ka ng vlog sa, sa GAD um, yan, yung Bausi gawan mo ng, ng vlog tapos uh, ita-download na lang namin pag na-download namin yung video kahit walang internet signal pwede namin panuorin kasi may mga lugar dito mga Bantad National High School ang hir medyo mahirap yung signal so ganun ganun yung gagawin nila tapos naman dun sa mga ano dun sa mga sa mga wala namang uh, asa may signal naman they will be watching this online sabi ko panoorin niyo naman online para meron naman akong watch hours so this is one way of how we do service to the people ito pa uh, this is also under domain 2 uh, school facilities and equipment yan so yan yung mga pwede yung yan yung mga pwede yung puntahan na uh, mga review ano review video okay so let's focus on the on domain to managing school operations sa yung administrative cases so this is under deped order number 49 series of 2006 so which is the revised guidelines uh, procedure department of education in terms of administrative cases so, madali lang tandaan din, 49. Uh, ang sabi, pag, uh, pag may kaso ka, it's a 50-50 case. So, pwede kang maabswelto. Diba? Pag, uh, pag may kaso, it's a 50-50. Or pwede kang uh, makonvict. Diba? So, play safe tayo para hindi, 49. 
So doon ka sa ano sa before 50. So 49. So tandaan niyo, Depend order number 49 series of 2006. Oh, ayan. So this is how you memorize. So on administrative cases, I will not discuss and I will not read this thoroughly. And disciplining authority po pag uh, uh, may mga administrative cases, pag po sa mga teachers is the regional director. Okay, pag non-teaching personnel, the disciplining authority or the deciding authority for the case is of course the SDS for non-teaching personnel. So, if you will be making a fact-finding investigation report, naka-address sa regional director, pag ang um, may case or alleged case sa fact-finding investigation ay isang teacher, naka-address siya sa regional director. Pag non-teaching, of course, to the SDS. So, ito, a procedure in commencing the administrative cases. Administrative proceed proceedings may be commenced moto proprio with the Secretary of Education wherein the deped officials and teaching and non-teaching personnel in the school superintendents in case of non-teaching, it's the same so ano ba yung sinasabing moto proprio halimbawa may nagreklamo at uh, nabasa nung SDS let's say non-teaching personnel sa, sa division level ngayon pag nakita niya na Nako eh, mukhang kaduda-duda talaga. Mukhang kapanipaniwala yung reklamo, yung reklamo. Eh, minsan, hindi nagkapakilala yung, yung nagre-reklamo. Kasi, uh, anonymous complaint. Anonymous complaint. Pero pag nabasa, ni SDS, at sinabi niya na, ah, this case is in moto proprio. Sa tingin niya eh, parang kapanipaniwala, parang, merong kadahilanan para mag-conduct talaga ng investigation. So, the case can be called a case in moto proprio. Yan. So, form of complaint. A complaint shall be under oath and shall be written in clear, simple, and concise language so as to inform the person complained of. So, ngayon, uh, halimbawa, uh, may nagreklamo na nga, there will be a fact-finding investigation or a preliminary investigation within 5 days from the receipt of appointment. So, there will be a team, usually tatlo yan. Okay? So, they will be going to the location or the school. Pero ngayon, kinakandak na rin ang mga pack-finding investigation online. And, uh, they will look for, kaya nga pack-finding investigation, they will be looking for facts. Uh, or looking for data and they will be interviewing yung mga witnesses o yung mga nagbigay ng mga statement and then hihingan din sila ng mga statement and all other evidences related to the alleged nasabi ko yung alleged kasi hindi pa naman napapatunayan okay, alleged complaint so in terms of preventive suspension upon motion to the complainant or motto proprio the proper disciplining authority may issue order of preventive suspension. So, take note of this. Upon issuance of the formal charge, oh, we will be talking about uh, uh, these words, formal charge, preventive suspension. Usually, if um, the fact-finding investigation committee decided to recommend formal charge, So, nagkaroon ng pack-finding investigation and the report should be submitted 5 days after the actual pack-finding investigation. So, may formal charge. Pag sinabi na we recommend uh, formal charge. So, yan. Pwede na na magkaroon ng preventive suspension. Pero, kung sabihin naman ng... Uh, pack-finding investigation uh, to drop the case for lack of merit. Ayun, di swerte ka. Nandun ka sa 49. Wala ka dun sa more than 50, 51 at uh, maaring ma-formal charge ka. That is what I'm saying. Na ang pack-finding investigation team can recommend. Recommend. Okay? 
So, ito naman yung mga pwedeng magkaroon ng preventive suspension. Sabihin ng SDS, upon the, recommend, upon, uh, the, the decision, on the recommendation of the FFI committee who have been uh, formally charged because of dishonesty, Yan, oppression, grave misconduct, neglect in the performance of duty. And there are reasons to believe that the respondent is guilty of charges which would warrant his removal from the service. Kasi malimit, kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, preventive suspension para hindi maapektuhan yung takbo ng magiging investigation. Because you, as being formally charged, you can have, eh, kung ikaw ay school head, lalo na, you have the, the authority sa school, so pwede mong takutin na pagkakausapin, hindi naman takutin, or you may affect the, the flow of the investigation. Kasi nandun ka, or pwede mong uh, mabago, or ma maiba yung mga documents yung mga evidences kasi nandun ka pa sa school kaya nagkakaroon din talaga ng preventive suspension so for next next is formal investigation so if you've been uh, uh, formally charged and you're given a preventive suspension which follows is a formal investigation what is a formal investigation it is the activity where the respondent does not request a ito na yung ano pala yung investigation this is uh, where you will uh, the respondent to pala another term the respondent ikaw yung uh, ikaw yung nagdepend kasi ikaw yung may kaso including the supporting documents of both parties merits of the case cannot be decided judiciously without conducting such investigation. That is the formal investigation. Dito na decide ang kapalaran kung ikaw ba ay terminate from the service or you will be given uh, one year suspension without pay or six months suspension without pay. And of course, the deciding authority again is either the regional director for teaching personnel and the SDS for non-teaching personnel. So, nag-focus lang ako dun sa, ano, sa part na yun ng formal investigation. For domain 3, which is uh, focusing on teaching and learning, so, pag-aralan nyo yung DCP project, Yung ALS, ADM Misosa, E-Impact, Homeschooling, Open High School, Department Order Number 36, Series of 2016, the Policy Guidelines on Awards and Recognition, Special Programs for the Arts, yan, Special Program for Journalism, Madrasa, iPad, Last Mile Schools, and all others na nakalista dito. And then, DCP, Benchmarking, Child-Friendly School, Instructional Supervision, How You Make the DLL, DLP, uh, DEPED Order Number 32, Series of 2019, Schools as Zone of Peace, DEPED Order Number 19, Series of 2019, the JDBP, TBL, DEPED Order Number 10, Series of 2019, the Senior High School Voucher Program, and uh, Religious Instructions. And Batas Pambansa 232, Education Act of 1982, and Republic Act 7610, which is anti-child abuse. That is under the main three. For the main four, Developing Self and Others, yan, Slack, Inset, Mentoring and Coaching, the Teacher Induction Program, Teacher Promotion from T1 to T2, T3, and Master Teacher, Hiring and Transfer of Teachers, PPST, RPMS, IPCRF, Teacher benefits as stipulated in Republic Act 11, 210, maternity leave, paternity leave, sick leave, proportional vacation pay. Non-teaching personnel, vacation leave, sick leave, forced leave, a compensatory time off, yan. special privilege leave, Republic Act 6713, Code of Ethics, Republic Act 7836, scholarship of teachers, at saka yung UPOU graduates, may memorandum yan that if you are a UPOU graduate, whether it is a diploma course, it can be considered as a master's degree. Yan. And for domain 5, building connection, syempre yung memorandum and uh, 
details ng PTA Adapa School Program Brigada Escuela Deped Order Number 30 Series of 2019 and School Communication Officer. Thank you for watching Aris Barago Vlogs. Watch, like, comment, share, and subscribe.